We've got our panelists here. I, I, I love seeing everybody. There's Daniel, Ashley, uh, yeah. Olivia. There's Brittany. Fantastic. There's David. Great. Awesome. Awesome. So, there, hey, Britt, how are you doing? <laughs> Sorry, I have to sit down. Uh, you're, no, you're all good. You're all good. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we're going to get started on time here in, uh, in basically 20 seconds and just want to make sure that you guys know that it's our goal to provide some value. You, you must be asking yourself, what is this all about? Right, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna get into that as well. Now we do have a smaller group in here, so I want to leave the mic open just for a quick conversation with you guys, where you guys can interact with us as well. Um, and in the in the small group environment, we can obviously have a little bit of a participation. We've got it says thirty four users here in this in this particular conversation. So we're gonna make this as interactive as we possibly can. Starting with that, um, I would love to just start with the basic question. Um, of what does it mean right up here on the screen to serve humans with love and why the heck would that be in an exp conference on the mentor track no less Any, anybody from the audience can willing to jump in and of course all, all my wonderful peeps up here glad to have you jump in here as well so what does it mean uh anyone want to jump in on that love gives back yeah, love gives back. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Um, who, remember, the energy in this room is directly related to the amount of participation that we have. So we could do this on mic. We could do this in chat. We can do this through uh, me, me picking on my panelists here. Uh, but I want to make this about you guys. So when you think about uh, serving humans with love and you think about whether that's on the att agent attraction side of this business or whether that's on the production side of this business. Uh, David's got his lightsaber out. Thank you, David. That's so cool. Uh, and. <laughs> Do not uh, even know. <laughs> <laughs> um, what what we're looking to do is we're looking to figure out how do we serve humans with love and what does it really mean. Uh, so so um, a, as you're thinking about that, if you walked away and we invested this time together, what would be the big win for you in terms of how you would how you would do that? Britt, do you have something to say? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. He's going to you. <laughs> Uh, so Brit, Brit's, Brit's actually, she's actually a break dancer and we're going to see her make some moves here pretty soon. Um, so, so guys, really, really straightforward. David Hill, let me ask you, what, what was the, when did you realize that serving humans with love was important? David Hill. Uh, yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's when, um, that's when you found out about the panel. So, yeah, so Dave, yeah, go ahead, Dave. No, I, you know, I'm, I'm. I'm kidding to an extent, but what it did yesterday was made me think about it. And, you know, I had to spend a lot of time really thinking about how I serve uh, humans with love. And, you know, reality is I, I grew up in a really dysfunctional, I had an abusive father. Um, so I didn't, I didn't get a lot of that. And for us, it was more about a, a, a scarcity mindset. And, you know, I, I had to protect myself. I learned, I learned protection. I learned you know, uh, getting things, making things work. So, you know, it, it, when I grew up and, you know, I grew up, uh, you know, to your, to your question, I would, um, when I got sober, I'd say 18 years ago is when, when it started for me, right. That's when I started to change. And, you know, just thinking about what, what, you know, what topic, it made me realize that once I had gotten sober, then I was able to change and I was able to help other people with sobriety. I've been able to do other things in sobriety to just help other people get sober and ultimately change their lives. And I think that was probably one of the biggest gifts for me. And, and you know, some of my gifts are, you know, I've always been a real good connector. I'm not sure exactly why based on my childhood, but I have, um, you know, I've always been a good speaker. I, I was a trainer for a lot of years at my past company, wanted to be university instructor. So I got to go out, teach a lot of uh, classes and do trainings regionally. And, you know, by doing that, a lot of people reached out to me and thanked me, you know, for even if it's like, hey, because of your training, I took my first listing or, or whatever it was. And just all those things made me feel really good about myself. I never really thought of it as, you know, I'm just helping others. I just thought of it as, okay, how am I doing what I love doing. So um, I appreciate you being on a panel and uh, you know, that's, that's what I, that's what I got from thinking about this yesterday. Cool. Well, good. Well, thank you. And, and 
and what I would love to do is, again, make this interactive, you guys. As you hear David's background, one of the things that I think about is I think about the fact that all of us come from a different foundation. We come from a we come from whatever the foundation is that we come from. And then there's a point in time where we decide that we're here for a purpose, that we're here for a reason. And love is the highest form of energy. It is the best way of being able to determine whether we're connected or not. And there's there's a lot of different types of love, as you know. There, there is, we're not just talking about one type of love here. Uh, from a biblical perspective, they say there's seven different types of love. And of course, there's other world teachings out there that talk about all the different types of love. So we're, we're, we're talking about the, the, the love that honors and connects and, and allows us to break down borders and boundaries and barriers. Uh, and and that's, really what the, that's really what this conversation is all about. Um, it's also about the diversity that is necessary in a world where there's so much um, anger, so much hurt, uh, so much division. Um, David, as you're thinking about how you serve humans with love across all cultures and all backgrounds, is there anything special that you do? Well, I mean, I, I host a, uh, let's see, what, what do I special I do? I, I host a, um, I host a few meetings locally that, you know, we, we just started one about a month and a half ago in the middle of COVID because a lot of AA meetings are, are you know, they're on Zoom and, you know, it works. For, it's, it's a great alternative to nothing, but a lot of people wanted to get back in. So I worked out an arrangement. We have a really large church where we were able to host a, a, a COVID AA meeting where everybody wears masks. So that, you know, that's something that's really given back. And we've got about 30 people showing up. Now every Monday, which is really awesome. Um, on another level, I host a national podcast, uh, w which you know I've been able to share, uh, you know, positive messages, uh, ideas, strategies with you know thousands of agents uh, around the country. We've had over, almost 200 interviews, and you know, again, this is stuff that I thought I really had to think about last night. Like, well, how do I give back? Because it's not stuff that just occurred to me. You know, and, and I want to come, you know, bring it back to the, you know, the step of uh, Alcoholics Anonymous is, uh, you know, it's, it's about giving, you know, giving it back. And they say the only way you can keep it is to give it back. So I have to continue to give and get outside of myself in, in order to, to keep the gifts that I've been through through sobriety. And that, that's really where I changed my life. So if I can help anybody with that, that's really where I'm at. And I try to do that through all areas, Devin, through my teaching through, you know, the podcast, through, through meetings, through sponsoring people, um, you know, anything, anything I could do to just help someone else on their journey and, and help them with their business, if it's their business or if it's their personal life or, or, or whatever. And I've got an amazing family and I'm, I've, I've just been really blessed. Yeah. And so, David, while, while you're talking, why don't you just uh, make sure you put in the chat box and also how we can reach you um, for, you know, deeper conversations after this after this conversation. Um, you're you're based in Massachusetts, correct? Yes, sir. Yes. Right outside of Boston. OK, fantastic. So for those of you guys who want to go deeper with David on any of those topics, feel free to reach out to him directly. Um, I'd like I'd like to talk to you. Uh, who, who else would be ready to talk about what, why th this is an important topic to them? I brought a, re a really great group of people together. Uh, so Daniel, uh, Daniel Askew is over here. Uh, Daniel, why don't you stand up and come on, uh, come on up in front of the mic here for us. This is Daniel Askew. He's a really good buddy of mine from Nashville, Tennessee. Daniel runs a very large team in Nashville. And Daniel, you and I were talking about um, uh, this. Can you just tell us a little bit about your background and, and why you became a leader and how that relates to this topic today? Uh, thanks for the opportunity, Devin. I was mentored by my father at Star Financial Industry and lost, lost him in cancer my second year in the business. And during that process, you know, I got a lot of clarity on what my mission was, and that is to help others succeed and to really um, empower other people to live their biggest life possible. So we've had our team for eight years, we've done about 250 million in sales, and all of that can be attributed to success through really investing in other people. So when you say investing in other people, obviously investing in other people has a connotation of serving humans with love. What does that actually look like? Well, it, it starts with being present and it starts with asking questions and really 
har harmonizing with your agents and harmonizing with your customers. And, and one thing I did learn from my dad was he harmonized generationally and that those were his words. And he would, he would do a loan for the parents, the kids, and then the grandkids. And in order to do that, he had to understand who they were, where they lived and who they knew and, and really what made them tick. And so I've taken that uh, same approach to our team and to our clients that we want to know who they are and we are present in our day-to-day -day business. So let's take that being present. What, you know, um, I, it, it, can, it can sound cliche. Um, what, what are the actual steps to be present in your attempt to serve humans with love? What does that actually mean? Well, it starts with gratitude for the opportunity to get to, um, to have a relationship with somebody. And second, it starts with questions. And it starts with, okay, let me understand your struggle, where you've come from, what your goals are. And then we can discern what you know, actions we need to take towards helping you achieve your goals through real estate. But really, with our clients, it starts with, first of all, believing in ourselves and believing in the product that we sell, that real estate is the fastest path to creating wealth and financial freedom. And we love ourselves and we love our product. And then we empathize with where other people are in their journey. So if I was taking notes, which I would love for you guys to keep the key ideas in the chat box, those who are participating from the audience and also from the stage, what I just heard Daniel say was that, that um, by loving yourself, you can actually have clarity on how to serve others. That's a huge aha for me, and I really appreciate that. You, 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 had, you and I were talking backstage about Whoopi Goldberg. Can you tell us a little bit about that story? Well, I envision empathy as Whoopi Goldberg and Ghost when she – he jumps into other people's brains, you know, and if you can't feel them and smell them and understand where they are and where they want to go, then you may be leading them in a direction that's not most beneficial to them, uh, but more beneficial to you. Fantastic. So um, as you're thinking about, Daniel, how it is that you can give the gift of serving humans with love, what is the, what is the outcome goal? Like, what, what, do, what do you get from that? Well, helping others is the selfish way to making yourself happy. And I think it's fulfillment, it's joy, uh, it's enjoying what you do, and it's leaving the world in a little bit better place than you found it. Fantastic. So, Daniel, if, if you were going to impart some value in terms of like, if you could wave a magic wand, what's the, what's the limiting belief that we have on this topic that you would like people to walk away from this conversation with and, and unlimit themselves with? Like, what, what's, what's holding us back from really doing this at a high level? I think people underestimate that other humans crave attention and affection and acceptance. And those feelings aren't through social media, that we've we've somewhat lost the art of face to face and connecting and and hugging and empathizing with people and spending time together. And so the limiting belief is that other people don't want and crave that connection uh, because they do. That is awesome, Daniel. And and, and forgive me, we, we uh, we're gonna we're gonna hold the applause to the end. But I am I am actually in awe of both da what David shared and Daniel. And I'm gonna bring up another panelist here. Uh, audience, I want you to make sure that you are able to understand that this is an open mic conversation. We have a we have a group of about uh, just a little bit less than 100. So if there's something that's hitting your heart and you want to speak about it, just come off mic, uh, come off mute, and let's let's start some you know, interactive dialogue between you and, and these panelists because this is a really great conversation. Thank you so much, Daniel. Uh, by the way, Daniel, you're going to put in the chat box your uh, how to how to reach you and and how to how to actually get those serving serving humans with love referrals in Nashville, Tennessee, correct? Yes, sir. Awesome, awesome. All right, cool. So. Um,
the the uh, um, I, I'd love to bring up Olivia next. Olivia, you have a special mastermind group that that literally focuses on how to help people on the operational side of the business. I would love to look out at the audience with you and see if there's anybody out there that is working on the support side of the business, not just the sales side. Put your if you click on raise hand button. Is there anybody out there that's raise your hand if you're on the support side of the business? Because Olivia is one of those people. Look at all those hands going up. That's so cool. Olivia, welcome and it tells us a little bit about your background before we jump in and and how you got connected to this conversation and how and how we got connected to this whole process um you want me to go sort of back to kind of how i started in the, in the business and got the yeah absolutely right from the beginning you bet um so go back eight or nine years i think about nine years now i was working independently um as a independent transaction coordinator listing marketing person um and I was working with Jim Black, who then um, about seven and a half years ago, he asked me to come on and be his PA. Um, so we went into business together then. Um, we have worked together for that seven and a half years now and have built a team. We've got 13 people. Um, and one of the things I sort of was mentioning to Devin along the way is that as we've grown, Initially, there was a big focus on the numbers and, you know, getting the business and, and growing the business and getting bigger and, and hitting bigger goals. And a few years in, um, I realized that we were looking at the numbers and we weren't looking at the people. Um, not only, not on the outside as clients, but inside, we weren't looking at the agents and their goals and what was important. Um, and we had a, a point where I decided, I sat down with everybody on the team that gets to sit down with me and I got their input, the good, the bad, the ugly. And I sat down with Jim and went through everything that we weren't doing well. And I basically said, we're doing everything wrong. And that was a scary thing to do because I was sitting down with owner and my boss and telling him we were, we were messing up completely. And his response after listening to everything was, you're right. What do we do now? Now take time out right there. Just I want to I want you guys to understand something about this conversation, which is so important. And that is that there had to be a level of rapport, Olivia, for you to feel comfortable and safe in that space between boss, partner, employee, executive assistant. What did Jim do or how did that how did that serving humans with love component show up for you to have the the freedom and the ability and the willingness to have that conversation? Absolutely, that's a great point. And from from the start of us working together, um, Jim made sure to, you know, we sat down, we sat down and figured out how we both communicated best, um, what the expectations were, where I wanted to go. I knew that I knew that other people's growth was very important to him um, and there was a very safe space to have very honest conversations. So I knew going into that conversation that what I was, the information that I was bringing was going to allow him to reach, to go in the direction that he actually wanted to go with the team. And, and I knew that, well, I didn't know how the conversation was going to go, but I knew that it was the only conversation that could be had at that time because i like i love i love the team then i love the team now i love the people in it and i wanted to see everybody on that team be going toward their goals and coming in and wanting to work with us and feeling that they are heard and, and listened to and i wanted to make sure that that was happening and and the fact that when we sat down and had that conversation he came back and said, okay, what do we do? That was a real turning point. And we were able at that point to really become a strategic partnership. And, and we look at, and, and in that time now, I'm able, one of the ways I can kind of serve Jim with love is to let him know when he's kind of going off in the wrong direction and, and he can do the same for me. So having that very open and trusting relationship allows us to become our best selves and our best best leaders.
That is awesome. And, and, and um, what, what, you know, I've got goosebumps. I don't know about you guys, but I am so excited about this idea that you move from basically at, at some point you chose, and I'm sure Jim did as well, but you chose the ability to move yourself into partnership versus maybe a subordinate relationship. So congratulations on that. As you, as you look at how you serve and help as a coach, by the way, Olivia was an amazing operational coach at her former company uh, with one of the top coaching organizations in the world. And she runs this, uh, this really great mastermind with uh, other people that are in the operational side of the business. As you think about how you serve with love as a coach and a leader, what does that look like for you? I think the, the, the most important thing that, that serving with love does as a coach and a leader is it lets me meet people exactly where they are without any judgment. I don't have an expectation of- All right, hold on, time out, time out. Repeat that, just let everybody write this down. You, you talk about a notepad moment. Say that again, slower, say it again. Serving with love in, in that role, I mean, in any role, really, it allows me to meet people exactly where they are with no judgment. Okay, and you heard David say this, you heard Daniel say this. I hope that you take that as a carrot, as a gift, you guys, from this group to you, that meeting people where they are. Now, let's go deeper on that. What does it mean to meet people where they are? It means to put aside any of my own notions going into that conversation of, who this person is, um, who they want to be, who they should be, all of that, I put it down and I just listen. And I listen for the things that they say, I listen for the things that they don't say, and I give them, I give them the opportunity to show me who they are and where they wanna go without my opinion of what's right and what's good and you know, what's success and what isn't success getting in their way. <clears throat> that is huge. I see a big note that's being put up there. Thank you so much for that, you guys. Um, the the uh, the thing that pops in my head, Olivia, as you're saying that, is that you said listen without a notion. Does notion mean judgment to you? Not necessarily, no. Um, okay. Tell me more know, about I, that then. I think that before judgment, there we can still go into a conversation with an idea of what the conversation is going to be or an idea of, of what it should be. Um, and it, it isn't necessarily judgment, but you're still going in with, here is the conversation I'm going to have. You kind of go in with, with a script almost. And in a lot of cases, a script is a great thing to have. Um, and in some conversations, going in with the end in mind actually gets in the way of having an open conversation. Yeah, I love that. Thank you so much. Um, so as director of operations, um, how do you serve your team with love? I'd say the biggest thing is that I am a fierce defender of our culture. Um, one of the things we started doing a few years in was a daily morning meeting. It's it's a quick meeting. We all get together. Um, it was in the office. Um, and then when COVID hit, it went right to Zoom, but we never missed it. And every morning at 8.30, we all get on together and everybody says one thing they're grateful for. And, you know, and, and if they need help with anything and what their goal is for the day, and if they had any wins the day before. So it's just an opportunity to share, share something positive, ask for help when needed. And that moment of gratitude, I have heard, I know for myself, I've had this experience countless times and I've heard, I've heard countless times from people on the team that that moment of gratitude can it starts your day in just a different level of energy. You could have like, you woke up in a bad mood, you know, the, the, the kids were going crazy, everything's nuts. You get on that and you hear people, some of them are really deep gratitudes, some of them are I'm grateful for a sunny day. And you come out of that connected um, and looking forward into the day. Um, another thing is just, you know, as far as that culture is, I make sure that we're having really clear communications. So if I see any kind of, you know, frustration sort of coming up or, or what looks like sort of a misunderstanding, I'm going to step in and just kind of help facilitate the conversation and the communication because I know that every person on that team is doing their absolute best. So if we're having a problem, it's either a problem of, you know, the communication isn't where it needs to be, there's a gap in our system, there's something to be fixed. 
I know that it's not the person. That is huge. Now, what, um, ladies and gentlemen, this is a really important conversation. Uh, what Olivia said is she says that every person on her team are doing their absolute best. Have you ever felt that they weren't? Over the course of the history of our team, there have been people, yes. Um, okay. Um, now, now, what's interesting about that, right, is that we, um, we, uh, you know, a, a, as a master practitioner of NLP uh, and understanding a lot about what's called presuppositions, there is one that says that people are doing the best they can with the resources they have at the moment. And what we find is that that when we create an expectation, you know, amazing conversation about gratitude, right? But then if we create an expectation that goes beyond their current capabilities then you know we're setting ourselves up for failure. Tell me more about what you've seen in your team as as that as that challenge has shown up for you. Uh, so like the challenge of of getting people to move forward. Yeah, like people that are stuck or people people that aren't aren't producing at the level that they should be or that you see big opportunities for. You know they have this potential, but their their actions or their attitude aren't aligning with that. So the what we do there is. I mean, when we bring them on to the team, we one of the things we do is a motivation interview um, to find out what their goals are, you know, what, what they really want, what's important, and we keep we do revisit that. So if somebody has the skill or the ability to reach a certain level and they're not, then the conversation is about is this goal still important to you? Is if it is still important to you, what's getting in the way? It's, it's looking at, because if, if I really want something, then I'm gonna move in that direction. If I only kind of sort of want it, I may not move in that direction, but I may say that's still my goal. And so it looks like I'm, I'm not doing my best. And really I'm just not moving in a direction I don't actually wanna go. And that's something that over the course of the years we've learned to be really aware of is there's a difference between what people can do and what they want to do. and our our role is to get them to where they want to be and if where they can be is beyond that and they don't want to be there it's not our role to push them beyond where they want to be it's our role to push them to where they want to be mm, i love that i love that a big round of applause for you olivia thank you so much and i know we said we're going to hold applause to the end i just i just feel so p passionate about what you're doing and how you're showing up Hey guys, feel free to reach out to Olivia. She's gonna put her contact information in the chat. Uh, she's gonna be here for Q&A. We're gonna get through this pretty quickly, uh, this part of it, and then we're gonna have a lot of Q&A at the end here. Um, I'd like to bring up Tina Bellavo if you're around. Tina, are you on stage somewhere? Yeah, I'm here, can you hear me? I can, why don't you step up, uh, step up out of that seat and come on up here and stretch your legs. Um, and uh, and then we can talk for a few minutes. I know you. I know you've got just a few minutes, but I want to jump in. You and I have been so blessed to know each other for the past few years. Tina, by the way, is now uh, on the new branding video. I don't know if you guys have seen the new branding video, but Tina is on the new branding video, and um, she's got some powerful statements that you can share from an agent attraction perspective. We're going to go more towards the serving humans with love conversation, Tina. I want to jump right in with a deep question. Are you ready? That's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> so Tina, Tina, um, uh, just kind of give you a little background on Tina. She's a former team leader uh, in, a, in a, at Keller Williams. She also ran multiple market centers. She's had massive success as an individual agent. She had a big, big team. I actually met her the day she joined uh, that, oh, that last organization. And she's just been such a blessing to me as a person who is fighting for women and a person who is fighting for your goals in your own life and your own brand. And I just am so excited to be, have, have this conversation. Um, wh when have you failed to serve others with love and what, ha what impact has that on you? I'm going straight to the bad stuff. Uh, <laughs> when, have you when have you failed? Talk about, talk about your failures to serve others with love. Yeah, well, thanks for getting right in there. You know, it's funny what you were just talking about with Olivia, that presupposition that people are doing the best they can. You know, when I was a new leader, so I started selling real estate when I was 19 and I got like, I was leading people pretty early on. I had an intern, then a part-time assistant, then a full-time assistant. So I was hiring people in my like early to mid twenties and I didn't know 
anything <laughs> about anything. You know, I, like I knew a little bit about how to sell real estate, but I didn't have any leadership skills um, besides like some natural, you know, proclivities. So I think, you know, it's a mistake as a leader that I've made is to project my own expectations of myself on other people. Mm. And, and what I would do is I would compare what they were doing to how I would do it. And then I would make up all kinds of stories totally unintentionally about why they were doing what they were doing. So it wasn't that I was always assuming the worst, but I think what would happen is whenever I would have that mismatch between an unconscious unspoken expectation and then what happened in reality, I didn't yet have the skill, the confidence and the awareness to like discuss it on a like evidential or factual level. So like it's sort of this trap of falling into emotions and assumptions and it would create some junk in my head. And, and that junk is probably what actually made it harder to just have a conversation if I'm making sense here. So like, Oh yeah, on, for sure. <laughs> early on it was that. So yeah, sometimes I would think people weren't trying or weren't, you know, fill in the blank. Um, because I wasn't yet very effective about putting myself in their shoes. Um, I'll say one more thing about this. I was recently interviewed for a podcast about my biggest leadership mistakes. So this is like fresh in my mind. And, and what I said was that like at the time, I think I was so caught up in my own world, which was growing my business. I did have a lot going on, very busy. So I, I do feel like the busier we are, the harder it can be to make space to really think through and feel what it's like to be someone else and, and in their situation. So it, you know, it, it can create these blockages to really slowing down and, and thinking about that. Like I had an early assistant who had made this mistake. She had sent this email to all of my clients that was meant to be sent to a bunch of realtors who were like referral partners. So it was kind of a weird thing, right? Like all these clients got a message about referral fees, a little bit embarrassing, a little bit awkward. And at the time she denied the email, like she wouldn't own up to it. And I was like incredulous, like how could you not just own it? And I, I couldn't get how hard it was for somebody else to own a mistake. And, and so I don't know if I'm really no yeah i i, I mean I, I think, but like those no, here, are the early situations where i I, right. I, just, I couldn't put myself over there no i love this conversation because we're, what we're dealing with is, is that we are you know another way of saying i mean another way that I, what's come to my head is that when we set expectations that are unspoken when we set expectations that are unclear with anyone around us that can actually be the opposite of serving humans with love right yeah, and I think as I'm like telling you all this like horrifying mental junk that comes from me sometimes, what I think about is that it's just like self-centeredness is mm. a culprit here. And I mean, we could all have different connotations for that, but like when I'm concerned with myself and how I feel or how I'm going to look or what someone is going to think of me, it gets in the way of everything else because I can't be there for them because I'm too focused on myself. Yeah, that's huge. So, I mean, what's so funny, Tina, is that I know you had a couple of tech issues and thank you to the world of EXP world for helping us with all kinds of learning. Um, the, the, the prior panelists that we talked to all mentioned this concept of selflessness. How do you gauge when you are like redlining towards self versus selflessness as you're, as you're, you know, attempting to serve humans with love? There's a lot of different flags and it's funny, like sometimes the signals are physiological, like I will feel really drained or even like my head is just going, 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 like just thinking myself to death. So like when I am kind of wrapped up in myself or my feelings, I will be tired or I'll even catch myself. I'll be in a meeting or conversation with someone and realize like, I'm not even listening. Like I'm not here. I'm thinking about what I have to do next or what I want to say back to them or whatever. So I think it is that practice 
of physical and like psychological self-awareness. Well, take us into your spin class mindset. You're a spin class instructor and huh? <laughs> you, you, you see that person that needs encouragement. You see them lagging. You see them stuck. Uh, you, you know, it, what, what, where does serving humans with love come into the spin world? You know, it's funny, like I, one thing I love about like having my, you know, I teach two spins classes a week. So I just have these little peaks of time where I'm up on this podium, encouraging and, and walking people through. And I find myself saying the things to them that I say to my highest self or wish that I would say to myself, just simple things like, it's just great that you're like, how great is it that you're here? Like I, I say a lot, like, I don't even care how good your workout is. I just care that you got yourself in the room because when you just get yourself on the field, whatever field it is we're playing, whether it's getting more listings or, you know, calling people we know, or, you know, whatever it is, that's like our area to grow. Um, just showing up is 90% of the battle. So like encouraging people to give themselves credit and, and look for the win because it's so like our brains. And I know Devin, I'm preaching to the choir when I say this to you, but like our brains are wired to look for the negative, to protect us from harm. So we have to be purposeful to look for the positive. So. Yeah, I, yeah, absolutely. And you know, you're going to get into a whole conversation with me about state and and the 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 idea of the fact that there's just a beautiful state or a suffering state. And and what when we when we are in that place when we know that we're suffering, one of the things that I've seen you do is I've seen you both been able be able to rebound from that state very effectively, the suffering state that is. But I've also seen you be able to bring other people into a beautiful state by helping model what it means to be in a beautiful state. So tell me more, like in your team structure as you see partners struggling whether it was in the former team or current what is it that you can do like at the snap of a switch uh in order to just go boom and help them help them see their opportunities you know i think there's a couple ingredients to it the first thing is i especially when i was in the position before what i'm doing at this moment i was responsible for a lot of people and a lot of like results and I had to get really aware of the things I was already saying, those physical cues of my state of like, am I thinking empowered, positive thoughts, or am I telling myself why things aren't going to work, et cetera, et cetera. And I could tune into my own energy. And then I was able to tune in to how someone else was showing up. And whether you believe in like energy, it can sound kind of woo woo, but like, I, we all know what it's like to be around somebody who's in a bad mood. Their behavior changes, their body language changes. So, you know, just, being cognizant of someone else's roller coaster and then being there for them and just like, like just calling it, but in the nicest, kindest way of like, Hey, like you look really down. Like, are you okay? Like, it's actually that simple. Like we all just want to be noticed and to have people be there for us and, and not judge us for however we're being at any given moment. So just learning how to be there for people and giving them a chance to just spit out whatever is in the way. And like, I'm not a big believer in fixing people. I think 90% of the time when I am struggling with something, me just kind of like telling somebody, what do they say? Like a burden shared is a burden lessened. So it's kind of the opposite of how I started sharing about this of like actually being selfless and being there for others, letting them be however they need to be, not trying to fix them or overly coach them or get all up in their business, but just have them know that like I'm, a, I'm an ally. And then people have space to work out their own junk by being sort of just a, a clear, a clearing for people to be however they are. Yeah, and th and then there's a fine line here, and I know you're I know you're short on time, so I won't. I, this will be my last question, but there's a fine line between being be be between being a trash can for someone and helping them clear something out. How do you how do you discern that? <laughs> I would say experience. I think um, you know the I, one thing I that I look for with the people that I partner with is for them to have some level of a coachable mindset. So if somebody is bringing the same problem repeatedly and maybe a few or one or two suggestions have been made and they never take them, there is a point where I just cut and run. Also, it's being cognizant of that psychological or physical energy drain. Like if I just am drained continually 
by anything. And it may not be a person. I think this also comes back to, you know, all of us in the real estate sales game working in our highest area of talent. And if something is just exhausting you and you're drained after you do it, like find a different way to grow your business or accomplish whatever it is. Because I, I guarantee you there's a way to do whatever you need to do inside of your natural gifts. And I think sometimes we don't get that messaging to look for that and, and to give ourselves permission to say, you know what, like, I hate that. I, I know I could do it, but I really, really don't want to. In my experience, I found a lot of really creative ways to accomplish my business goals without doing the traditional things that are often advised by like prototypical sales trainers. Yeah, that's huge. I know you got to jump. So give us one parting shot about how it is that we can walk out of this room today at, at a higher awareness of how to serve humans with love. So I would say, I mean, that to serve others with love, it, it's an inner journey first. So I would say, look for the, just be present and look for an indicator of when your energy goes down or you're drained by something, or you find yourself caught in a thought loop when you're not present and give yourself a chance to notice it and then try something different to shift the energy. Maybe it's changing a tactic, maybe it's disengaging earlier, or maybe it's just sharing that burden. And by managing our energy and our mindset, we can then get out of the way to then go do the things that we actually want to do, whether it's serving others or anything else in life. Fantastic. So uh, we're going to try a, since Tina's going to pop out of here, we're going to try a EXP uh, round of applause by using your your raise hand button so she can see some feedback from the audience there. Press, press the raise hand button so she can say, see all that love that you got out there. Thank you <laughs> Thank all. You. So great. Thank you. Here. Yeah. Thanks, Tina. Thanks for popping in. Really appreciate you. Okay, so we're gonna make we're gonna transition over to Ashley, if that's okay. Ashley, um, thank you for being brave and coming up on stage here. Why don't you stand up and come and meet me out in the middle here? This is Ashley, everyone. You can also give her a raise hand. She she's uh, very excited to be up here, right, Ashley? Oh, I'm so excited. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so Ashley recently made the transition over to EXP, and Ashley, tell us a little bit about your background of of uh, where you know where you were prior to your transition, and 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 kind of just a quick story about what you know what your background is to brought brought you to here today from a from a you know prior company up until now. Uh, yeah. So seven years with my previous brokerage, and then I came over. Um, with a team of about six TXP about six months ago. Um, and it was just really looking for bigger opportunity, better leadership and networking. And that's how I ended up over here. Cool. And some things happened along the way that were pretty exciting. And you're attempting to serve humans with love through not only providing to your clients, but to these amazing humans you brought over. And you learned some things along the way. Tell us, what have you learned in the last six months about serving humans with love? Yeah, so I'm learning so much right now just being on this panel and preparing for it and from what everyone else is um, talking about. It's just amazing. Um, I think in, in talking with you, I had mentioned that you say the opposite of love is suffering. And then I had mm -hmm. asked a few people um, in preparing for this what they thought. And someone had said, oh, the opposite of love is fear and ego. And then another person had said that... Um, like leading humans through love is caring more deeply about someone than yourself. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. Um, Cause I completely agree with, you know, that suffering and fear and ego um, is not showing love, but the caring, something about the caring more deeply for someone than yourself it didn't really sit right with me because I do think that my mom used to always say when I grew up, the world doesn't revolve around you, Ashley. And I thought, okay, you're right. You know, it's all about other people. Nothing is about me. And I, I think my biggest aha in my career and everything I learned at my previous brokerage and now is it, it really is about us and taking care of ourselves first. Um, because we can't help someone if, you know, we're so worried that they're going to like us. And that's a big thing with me that I really struggle with. It's like, oh my goodness, I want everyone to like me. So I don't want to say anything that's going to hurt their feelings. Um, and that's lack of courage, right? And that's trying to avoid suffering or just take kind of the easy road. So for me, being able to be courageous, um, have difficult conversations, 
and and that's not necessarily caring more deeply about them it's it is focusing on myself and and be strong ashley have this conversation because what is really showing love it's going to be having that conversation with them having listened having a lot of what olivia said was just great because it's not it's not judging them it's seeking to understand and then having the courage to have a difficult conversation to help them reach their goals get where they want to be yeah, you have a favorite author we talked about backstage um, who talks about this topic. Can you talk to us about Brene Brown and some of the things that you've learned from her? Hmm. So that may have been someone else. I do oh, love forgive Brene. Me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Um, if I was thinking of a book that like changed my life, it would probably be The Four Agreements um, mm. with, by Don Miguel Ruiz, just because I think understanding others um not taking offense to situations i like to sit back and watch people um you know how they especially on my team i've learned so much because how do people deal with others on the team and we do just assume that we know their situation and it's so easy to get offended by what other people are doing but i i just think that was life-changing to me right nothing they're doing has anything to do with me you just have mm. to sit back and watch. I love that. I love that. So we're, you're going to stick around and answer Q, Q and A. Is there anything else that you want to share with us about how it is that you would want these people to walk away and level up their game when it comes to serving humans with love? For me, I think just pausing and seeking to understand the other person, maybe why they're doing what they're doing, what they're going through, and just listen. Okay, fantastic. Awesome, awesome. Th uh, thank you, Ashley. And, and let's give the raise hands to Ashley now that I've got that going. Let, there you go. Thank you. Let's get some feedback to Ashley. Thank you so much. We're going we're gonna to do Q&A in just a minute. I've got one more person up here, I think, to talk to. Let's see, where is that person? Oh, Brittany Nolan. Uh, come on down. You're the next contestant. Uh, so Brittany, Brittany and I have, uh, have a really great journey together. We actually met uh, Britt... Um, I, is it four years ago, October? Uh, yeah. We four years ago, October. Um, Brittany was working for a TV personality in Beverly Hills as a director of operations or office manager for a very famous uh, TV personality who does real estate on one of those fancy shows. And uh, you learned a lot about serving humans with love all the way back then, didn't you? <laughs> oh, I did. <laughs> um, so, so t tell us as as you're thinking about today's topic. I know I know that we we talked and we prepared. Um, what would be the what would be the like if you gave me just the bottom line? Let's start with the bottom line first, and we'll back up from there. What's the one thing that you know that people need to do that they're not currently doing when it comes to serving humans with love? Um, I I mean I know other people have touched on this already, but I think just meeting people where they are and. Um, you know, not coming from a place of judgment, but maybe from a place of curiosity um, and just being curious of where they are. I mean, I love the quote that um, is people are doing the best with what they've got. Like they, you know, they're people are doing the best with what they have. And in the moment, um, I guess just realizing that and understanding that like coming from where they're coming from and understanding that they might have something else going on that you don't know about. Yeah, I love that. So how do you show love uh, even when you disagree with someone? Um, I think more of the same, just meeting them where they're at and, and trying to stay out of judgment. Um, the love languages is popping into my mind. Um, so I, you know, and I kind of think about this in my personal life and with my husband and whatnot of, um, you know, maybe we're not seeing eye to eye or they're not understanding that I'm appreciating them um, when I'm trying to show it one way. So I try to put myself in their shoes and understand what would make them feel loved and make them feel appreciated. And maybe it's not the way I'm expressing it. Maybe it's a different way. So that's gone a long way for me in relationships um, and in business of just loving on someone the way that they want to be loved on. Well, you and I served a lot of clients in Orange County, California together, and then you made your recent transition over to Kansas City. And serving humans with love uh, from, a, from a geographical perspective, from a, uh, from a political perspective, 
from a from a, you know clients or family. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of different things in meeting people where they are. What does love mean to you? Um, I think to me, love means it's like the highest form of yourself. Um, and staying in love to me, I think of the word presence, like just staying present in the moment. Um, and I think when I'm living in love, um, it eradicates things like fear. I know other people have talked about that fear and ego, um, and more, you know, negative emotions, um, and I think of Tony Robbins when he says, you know, people um, just want to be loved. Like, you know, their greatest fears are that they're not good enough and they won't be loved. Um, so I think staying in love and um, being able to connect with people through love is kind of our ultimate purpose. Yeah, I love that. I, th I, th I think what's fun is that you actually you traveled with Tony Robbins for a year in his platinum program. You coached with Tony Robbins. You you've you've in you've encountered some of the some amazing people along that journey. As you look at you know not only that world but all the world around you, when you think about serving humans with love, what's the component that we most often miss? Like what 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 do you see as you know you got this amazing recipe of how to do it, but what are we missing? I think it all comes back to yourself, be, do, have. So who are you being in the moment? Um, you know, we tend to focus on what do I need to do to get what I want, sort of have all these things. And people miss the step of who do I need to be first. And I think, um, you know, if you encounter things that maybe trigger negative emotions in yourself, it's usually about you. It's not about the other person. Um, so in terms of relating to somebody else, um, it's like if you're not meeting someone eye to eye and they're triggering you, it's usually about something within yourself that's not congruent or not sitting right with you. And who are you being um, that may not be authentic? Yeah, I love that. I love that. And by the way, you know what's so funny, you guys, is that I, I while we didn't script this out fully, the 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 key thing that keeps coming up is this concept of triggers. And when you find a trigger, Britt, how do you uh, a identify it and then b release it? How do, how do you make that trigger go away? Sometimes it's easier than others. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. I, mean, I think I think I've become good at identifying triggers just because I, I'm, I've practiced heatedly living in a space of, okay, I'm being triggered. What is this about me? Like I've trained my brain to kind of turn it back on myself. Um, I mean, in terms of releasing it, I think just being able to have conversations and that, as you know, um, when you and I met several years ago, it was difficult for me to have hard conversations, the fierce conversations as we would call them. Um, yeah. And I think just practicing that and being able to talk through triggers or emotions or anything I'm feeling with, um, you know, friends or family or even you can equate that to clients as well. Um, if there's something you need to work through, I think just having that first conversation opens up um, the ability to have a really great relationship and love between you and someone else. Well, you, your willingness to be growth minded and everybody up here on the stage, you guys, is a growth minded person. But Britt, Brit, your willingness to be growth minded and even attempting to step into this conversation about fierce conversations allowed you to unlock some family opportunities. Right. I mean, you, you literally opened up new doors that weren't open in the past for conversations that you couldn't have in the past or didn't choose to. Tell me more about how those relationships have flourished over time. Sure. I mean, just, you know, conversations with parents, um, specifically my dad, I would avoid telling him how I felt or, um, you know, really going there with, with him. And I feel like over the last few years, I've been able to move through that and have conversations I wouldn't normally have had. And my relationship with him has gotten a lot better. And, um, you know, that goes for other people in my life as well. Just pushing myself to have conversations that I would normally shy away from or that might be uncomfortable. Um, you know, and I, I've got great role models in my life as well that do that. Um, Devin, you're very good at that. My husband is also very good at that. Um, so I'm blessed to be surrounded by people that want to demonstrate that.
I love that. I love that. And yeah, I, I think what, what I can only be good at helping people that are willing to be helped. And so as a coach, as a mentor, as a partner, you and I've been, you know, we've been through a lot of transactions together. We've been through a lot of learning and growing together. The thing that I just want to applaud you specifically about is the willingness that you've had to grow. And then I've also seen you go through cycles where sometimes it's okay to be where you are and just to love people where they are. And I think that's one of the things that's been fun about you to me is that you've loved me where I am, where I'm maybe in non-growth and you have it said, dude, you suck. Um, so tell me more about how do you love people where they are? Yeah, I mean, I think um, just accepting them. And um, I think it might, I'm not sure which panelist um, said this, but basically pushing them to where they want to be, not as not further than that. Um, and just kind of accepting where they are and that they're on their own journey um, in growth. And um, I've been reading, it was me actually that was talking about Brene Brown. Um, uh, there you go, thank you. One of her concepts is basically, I mean, she talks a lot about courage and vulnerability and loving yourself. And if you wanna have a down day, have a down day. Like don't feel guilty about it and do it purposely. Like choose to be purposeful with everything you do. So if you wanna have some time where you're not ready to face something and you don't want to go grow through it right now, then just choose to do that and do it purposely and then come back to it later. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. Well, let, let's uh, give another uh, raise hand for Britt here. And then I want to bring the boys back up. I want to bring David and Daniel back up. Brittany, thank you so much. We're going to get you uh, back, back to you on Q and a here. Uh, David and Daniel, I want to ask you a question about how it is that gender affects the ability for us to serve humans with love and and what's going on in the world today on this topic i would love for you both to just kind of chime in how do you serve women with love well i've learned at home hmm. to ask great questions and and get out of her way and okay uh, <laughs> and how does that apply to the workplace well i think yeah, I think you have to, you know, regard men and women, but in particular women, sometimes it's embolden them, uh, which basically means just to help them, you know, give them the courage and the confidence to move forward uh, with what they want to do. You know, unfortunate, yeah. unfortunately, a lot of men are condescending towards women um, as, you know, from client to, to agent. And, you know, women are better than men, if, if we're being honest, <clears throat> and <laughs> we can all learn a lot from them. So I think it's uh, we, we've had a lot of really successful women uh, on our team and we learn empathy from them. <clears throat> we learn listening. Mm -hmm. We learn execution and um, just grateful, you know, grateful to have that perspective um, in our company. Yeah, stay standing, and we're gonna bring we're gonna bring up the ladies in just a second. David, to, uh, give it give us uh, give us your perspective on this serving <coughs> women with love. Well, you know, I've been blessed, Devin, to have three daughters, and also my oldest daughter. You know, she just had a, a daughter as well, so I have a granddaughter, and so I've been around you know women my whole life, and uh, I would say you know what Dan said. I think just the empathy. Uh, that comes, you know, from women, um, you know, for me, I think it's more, I, I don't know if I differentiate how I would treat a woman with love from a man with love. I think I, I attempt to treat everybody the same, um, just to kind of understand what they're coming from, where they're coming from, which was talked about earlier and to be supportive. And, you know, I think one of the things for me, you know, and, and I shared a little bit at the beginning was, um, you know where I came from. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't grow up with a lot of love and a lot of empathy and a lot of that. So I had to learn that over the years. And um, I've always been a a grinder. You know. You know my story. I started uh, telemarketing at a young age, and I built the real estate business uh, through telemarketing. So the thing that shifted over the years is I used to just grind and grind and grind. And at some point, it became coming from a place of contribution. Like, hey, you know, I'm I'm just calling and and I just want to help you out. And if I can help you out, great. If I can't, then that's great too. And, you know, I, I just don't want to leave you in a worse place than, than you were before we, we, we uh, met or we talked or we interacted. So I guess that's, you know, so uh, it, it's a great question. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm blessed that I've been able to be around women and experience that. And yeah, it's, uh, I, I, but I try to treat everybody exactly the same, Devin. 
Thank you, buddy. So, ladies, um, you know, how can we as men serve and uh, not serve you with love? Like, what, what, what does that look like? I mean, for me, I think um, my husband comes to mind on this. I married someone who's, if you guys are familiar with the disc profile, a high D, and I am not a high D. Um, but for us to work well together, like we've just, we embrace each other's differences. We really celebrate our differences and what I'm good at versus what he's good at. And we really have identified our roles in the household of what we're good at to work as a team. And I think obviously you can apply that to business as well, um, men and women, and um, just embracing each other's strengths. And um, I don't know, I just believe that we can all kind of work together and, and celebrate each other. Awesome, awesome. Hey guys, this is the, this, we, are, we have another presenter coming on in one minute. So we are, we are needing to wrap up, but there, if you walk out the back doors, if anybody wants to have a personal conversation with any one of us, we're gonna go out the back right doors, which is kind of your left. If you pop out there, we'd be glad to Thank you so much for allowing us this time. And I really appreciate you guys coming in here to learn about this. And we'd love to connect with you right out back, uh, the back right doors when we're facing the stage. And, uh, and we'll be glad to talk to you individually um, out, out, out in the back there. And again, uh, we're gonna just a big round of applause, you guys, for all these amazing people. Thank you. And, and uh, if you want to connect with us, you know how to do that. Um, everybody, I don't know if you've learned, if you type in slash dance two, it has a really cool. Oh, uh, <laughs> Devin, don't forget to 